Assessing the cardiovascular system. Identify the patient. Rationale. Proper patient identification is crucial for patient safety and ensuring that you are assessing the correct individual. Confirming the patient's identity helps prevent errors in documentation and treatment. Explain the purpose of the cardiovascular system and answer any questions the patient may have. Rationale. Providing the patient with information about the purpose of the cardiovascular system helps them understand the significance of the assessment. It also fosters open communication and allows the patient to ask questions or express any concerns they may have about the assessment. And now, we're going to show you how to do the proper hand hygiene. Wet hands with water. Step 1. Apply enough soap to cover all hand surfaces. Step 2. Rub hands palm to palm. Step 3. Right palm overlap person with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Step 4. Palm to palm and finger interlaced. Step 5. Wax of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Step 6. Rotational rubbing of left thumb, clasp and right palm and vice versa. Step 7. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand and left palm and vice versa. Step 8. Rinse hands with water. Step 9. Dry hands thoroughly with a single use towel. Step 10. Use towel to turn off a faucet. So there you have it. You have it. Your hands are now safe. Perform hand hygiene. Rationale. Hand hygiene is a fundamental infection control measure that must be followed before initiating any patient contact or assessment. It helps prevent the spread of infection and ensures patient safety. Assist the patient to a supine position with the head of the bed elevated about 30 to 45 degrees and expose the anterior chest. Rationale. Positioning the patient in a supine position with the head of the bed elevated allows for better access to the interior chest during the cardiovascular assessment. Elevation of the head of the bed improves comfort for the patient and facilitates the assessment process. Inspect and palpate the left and then the right carotid arteries. Only palpate one carotid artery at a time. Use the bell of the stethoscope to auscultate the arteries. Rationale. This step helps to assess the blood flow in the carotid arteries, which are major arteries supplying blood to the brain. Palpation should be done one at a time to avoid compromising blood flow to the brain. Using the bell of the stethoscope helps detect any brutes in the arteries. Inspect the neck for jugular vein distension. Observing for pulsation. Rationale. Jugular vein distension and pulsations can indicate increased central venous pressure, which may be a sign of heart failure or other cardiovascular issue. Inspect the precordium for contour, pulsation, and heaves. Observe for the apical impulse at the 4th to 5th intercostal space. Rationale. Examining the precordium helps assess the overall shape of the chest and any abnormal pulsations or heaves. The apical impulse is the point of maximum impulse PMI and its location can indicate cardiac enlargement or displacement. Using the palmar surface with the four fingers held together, Palpate the precordium gently for pulsation. Remember the hands should be warm. Palpation proceeds in a systematic manner with assessment of specific cardiac landmarks, the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral areas and herbs point. Palpate the apical impulse in the mitral area. Note size, duration, force, and location in relationship to the midclavicular line. Rationale. Palpation helps to detect any abnormal pulsations or thrills over the cardiac areas. Warm hands enhance sensitivity. The specific cardiac landmarks and the apical impulse location provide information about the size, force, and position of the heart. Use systematic auscultation, beginning at the aortic area, 
moving to the pulmonic area, then to the herbs point, then to the tricuspid area, and finally to the mitral area. Rationale. Systematic auscultation allows for the assessment of each heart valve and area, helping to identify any murmurs, abnormal heart sounds, or arrhythmias. Ask the patient to breathe normally. The stethoscope. Diaphragm is first used to listen to high-pitched sounds. Focus on the overall rate and rhythm of the heart and the normal heart sound. Rationale. Listening to the heart sounds during normal breathing helps assess the heart's rate, rhythm, and any abnormalities in the heart sounds S1 and S2. Inspect the upper extremities. Observe skin color, presence of lesions, rashes, and muscle mass. Palpate for the presence of lesions, rashes, and masses. Rationale. Assessing the upper extremities helps identify any circulatory or skin abnormalities that may indicate vascular or neurological issues. Inspecting and palpating the upper extremities as part of a physical examination provides valuable information about a patient's circulatory, neurological, and dermatological health. Early detection of abnormalities can lead to timely interventions and improved patient outcomes. In addition to the visual and tactile assessments, evaluating the upper extremities can also help gauge a patient's functional abilities. This involves asking the patient to perform various tasks such as gripping, flexing, extending, and rotating their arms and hands. This functional assessment is particularly relevant for individuals recovering from injuries, surgeries, or managing chronic conditions. It provides insights into their range of motion, strength, and coordination, which are essential for daily activities and overall quality of life. Palpate the radial and brachial pulses. Rationale. Evaluating peripheral pulses in the upper extremities helps assess blood circulation and can reveal arterial occlusion or other vascular problems. To add up, palpating the radial and brachial pulses is a fundamental component of assessing circulatory health. These pulses provide immediate feedback on the adequacy of blood flow to the upper extremities, including the hands and arms. Assist the patient to a supine position. Examine the lower extremities. Inspect the legs and feet for color, lesions, varicosities, hair growth, nail growth, edema, and muscle mass. Rationale. Examination of the lower extremities helps identify potential circulatory, neurological, or skin issues. Variations in color, edema, and muscle atrophy can provide important information. Test for pitting edema in the pretibial area by pressing fingers into the skin of the pretibial area. If an indentation remains in the skin after the fingers have been lifted, pitting edema is present. Rationale. Pitting edema assessment helps determine the extent of fluid retention, which can be indicative of various medical conditions, including heart failure, kidney disease, or venous insufficiency. Palpate for the pulse and skin temperature at the posterior tibial, dorsalis, pedis, and popliteal areas. Rationale. Assessment of lower extremity pulses and skin temperature helps evaluate peripheral vascular circulation and can indicate vascular disorders or arterial occlusion. Assist the patient to a comfortable position. Rationale. Ensuring patient comfort promotes cooperation and relaxation during the assessment, facilitating more accurate results.
Perform hand hygiene. Rationale. Hand hygiene is essential to prevent the spread of infection and maintain patient safety during the assessment. Hand hygiene is a critical aspect of nursing practice and plays a pivotal role in maintaining patient safety and preventing the spread of infections within healthcare settings. It involves the simple act of cleaning one's hands thoroughly and regularly to remove dirt, germs, and other contaminants. Proper hand hygiene is essential for both healthcare providers and patients. Here, we'll discuss the importance of hand hygiene in nursing and its significance in healthcare. One of the primary reasons for emphasizing hand hygiene in nursing is to control and prevent the transmission of infections. Healthcare-associated infections highs are a significant concern in healthcare facilities, and they can have severe consequences for patients. Nurses have a responsibility to ensure the safety of their patients. By practicing good hand hygiene, nurses can protect their patients from potential harm. Contaminated hands can transfer harmful microorganisms from one patient to another. Additionally, nurses should be aware of the five moments for hand hygiene framework endorsed by organizations like the World Health Organization WHO and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC which outline specific moments during patient care when hand hygiene should be performed. Document the findings of the assessment. Rationale. Accurate documentation of assessment findings is crucial for ongoing patient care, communication among healthcare providers, and monitoring changes in the patient's condition over time. Thank you for watching. We hope you found the information valuable and informative.